This has been a presentation of KTCA TV, Channel 2. Then maybe you'd better move. I'm gonna move. Good. <laughs> Don't miss The Righteous Apples, Fridays at 10. It's the winning of the West matinee style this week at the Bijou. On the marquee of the melodic Carmen and Icing cartoon, Crosby, Columbo, and Valley, and a rare glimpse back into the golden age of Hollywood. Then we'll mosey on over to the bunkhouse for the 1932 musical short, The Last Dogie. Gene Autry returns in The Phantom Empire. Then Henry Hathaway's big screen spectacle, Buffalo Stampede. The Cowboy is King, this week on matinee at the Bijou. Watch Matt and Nate the Bijou Friday at 10.30. This is your community-supported public television station, KTCA-TV, Channel 2, St. Paul, Minneapolis. The following program was recorded earlier for rebroadcast at this time. Night Times is a production of KTCA, Channel 2. <laughs> Twin Cities, this is Nighttime Sports Line with Jim Clitterson. Good evening. The pro football explosion struck a largely unprepared America back in the 1960s. For millions of American men, it transformed Sunday afternoon by ending the drudgery of leaf raking. It gave them something useful to do, such as tearing their hair for seven hours and throwing chip dip at the television. But soon the psychologists started worrying about their wives and their significant others. Was television football causing domestic chaos in America? Was it polarizing the family, blighting our sex lives? Nobody took seriously the proposal that millions of American women might actually want to know something about pro football and enjoy it as much as men. I can tell you such women exist and in impressive numbers. I can tell you that because for a few months each fall I function as the professor in residence at a football clinic in the Twin Cities for Women which hundreds attend. And tonight, we've invited 40 or 50 members of that class to prize some football knowledge or whatever knowledge is available from two of the most celebrated Minnesota Vikings, Tommy Kramer and Scott Studwell. Because there's so much curiosity packed into the studio tonight, I'm just going to let it happen and stay out of the line of fire, at least most of the time. Tommy, of course, is the talk of pro football this year. And Scott Studwell, with whom he shares a home in Lakeville, is one of the Vikings' tough guy linebackers. If you want to join in from the viewing audience, the number to call is 642-1980. That's 642-1980, and we'll try to wedge you in. Well, Tommy and Scott, thank you for joining us, and I hope you've, uh, I hope you've been looking at your playbooks because we have got all kinds of people hungry for knowledge. And the first one here is this lady. I want to know if women reporters come in the locker room when you're undressed. <laughs> Are you a woman reporter? <laughs> but I could try. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no. They don't allow. We have, we have had one come in our locker room down Tampa Bay uh, last year, and uh, she had quite a treat. But, uh, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> no, she, uh, she caught a little bit of abuse by a few of the boys. But uh, no, they don't usually come in. Bud doesn't allow men. Oh. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of that idea? Uh, of, shouldn't the lady reporter have the same right uh, as the male in the locker room? Well, she comes in and takes her clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> do the male reporters come in with their clothes off? <laughs> Pardon? The, the male reporters don't have their clothes off, do they, Jim? <laughs> I wonder if we ought to get back to the... I wonder if we ought to get back to the three-four defense. Right. <laughs> okay. Not a fighter, and how do you like that uh, classification? I like both. <laughs> <laughs> that no. was a line that Bud Grant used last year when Tommy was the subject of some controversy, and, and Bud was asked, does it bother you? And he said, no, I don't care about Tommy's nightlife. He's a lover, not a fighter. So that's, that's the origin. Well, I think when you're, when you're in love, you do a lot of fighting anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think that Tommy might be getting married. Is that a possibility? Well, I've got, I uh, found myself a new girlfriend, so I've been dating her for a while, and, uh, you know, you never know. You wouldn't get married. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. Did the players get any, get to have any input into how the new stadium was designed or anything? No, that's left strictly up to the people uh, in the front office. Mm -hmm. Do you think with the new stadium, the Scandahoopians up here in Minnesota are going to be like the Denver fans? The what? The Scandahoopians. You don't hear those. <laughs> You don't hear that kind of language in Texas now. She, she wants to know if all of these, you know, uh, very staid Minnesota Scandinavians can become hysterical the way they are in Denver. Well, if they can do it in Detroit, I'm sure they can do it here. Yeah. They're awful loud in Detroit. Does that help? Uh, does it help? Oh, I think it definitely advantage to the home team uh, while you're playing because when the other team has the ball, if you're yelling so loud, then it makes it tough on the other team. Mm. To know when you have the rest of us the cardiac arrest out there at the last minutes of the fourth quarter how do you keep your cool i think uh more than anything i'm just doing so much thinking out there you know and uh i just want to get on the scoreboard as quick as i can to you know help you out a little bit but uh you know we're just happy to win it plus it makes it more exciting too but uh, we'd like to win it a lot quicker though i'm just wondering uh last sunday tampa kind of played like they had it, like maybe it was too cold for them to play football. Is there anything to this myth that the Vikings play better when it's cold, and are we going to lose any psychological advantage next year? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that the uh, cold weather does bother the teams coming up from the south. Uh, I think it's always been a great advantage for the Minnesota Vikings to play in that cold weather, and uh, we have always played well in that weather. Uh, the weather conditions have never bothered us. Uh, I think probably the prime example is uh, you see the heaters on the sidelines, and they're always on the other team's benches and never on ours. And most of them are around their benches and they're not watching the game. Yes. Um, how would you rate the Vikings defense to that as compared to the other teams in the Central Division? Well, I think we've, we got off to kind of a slow start because we've, we've got a new defense this year with the 3-4. And uh, it, was, it was a foreign defense for us and we weren't really used to it. And, uh, but I think right now we're probably playing as well as any of them. Uh, <laughs> I think our potential is unlimited. Are you happier with the 3-4?